Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live cooking demonstration. Just a couple quick things before we get started. We are going to be recording today's session, so you can share it with a colleague who may have missed it or view it again later if you're interested. All of our recordings go onto our EVWS YouTube page, so you can check us out there. Now, during today's presentation, if you've got questions, comments, um, tips you want to share, or maybe you're having some issues with the audio and the video, please let us know in the chat box. Make sure you set your comment to go to all panelists. I'm joined today by Tony Pelote. She'll be moderating the chat for me. So if you're having any technical issues, send a message to all panelists. That way she'll be able to help you diagnose it. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So throughout the presentation, if you send any comments related to the recipe, we will be sure to review all those at the end. Today, we're gonna to be making roasted curry chickpea bowls. So this is a pretty simple recipe. We've got a couple different steps. We're gonna be using the stovetop. We're gonna be using the oven. However, in terms of what you actually have to do preparation wise, it's fairly straightforward. So I really like this one. I have gone ahead and gotten a head start. I have my quinoa cooking behind me. So we are gonna be making use of quinoa. I'm using the tricolor quinoa. So it's got three different colors in it there. I just like that kind. You're welcome to use any of the different colors that you find. They're all gonna be a healthy whole grain choice. That's gonna serve as the main carbohydrate and the base of our bowls. So that's cooking behind me. Nothing out of the ordinary there, just cooking it according to package directions. And we're using two thirds of a cup of dry quinoa for this recipe. So while that's cooking, we're gonna get started on preparing the things that will go into the oven. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're just gonna want a basic rimmed baking sheet here. Just a typical size one will do. And we're gonna prep our vegetables. So the main veggies we've got going on today, we're gonna to be using a medium head of cauliflower. And I'm gonna show you how I go about chopping it. There are a couple different methods, but I find this one works pretty well. The first thing we're gonna do is just press our knife right down through the middle of it. Now, when you get your cauliflower, you wanna rinse it very well. You're gonna have a lot of lettuce and greens and things like that on the bottom. A lot of dirt can collect there, so it's a good idea to rinse that out to the best of your ability. So once you've cut it in half, you can see inside there, and we're gonna do a V-shaped cut to remove as much of the hard stock as we can. That part is edible, but texture's not great, and it's not super fun to bite into. So raking a V-shaped cut carefully like that and repeating it on the other side. And what you should be able to do is just pull that piece right out after you make the cut. And we can get rid of these little green pieces here. And similar to how you'd handle broccoli, we're gonna cut as close to the top of it as possible. I'm really trying to remove those hard pieces of stock. And then once you get that broken down, you can just run the knife through. And our goal is to just cut these into small florets. Um, making them as evenly sized as possible so that they can bake evenly whenever they're in the oven. Now cauliflower is an interesting vegetable. Uh, a lot of veggies, we can take a look at the color of them and we get a lot of information about the nutrients that they have. Carrots are bright orange, so we're aware of their vitamin A content. Um, typically when we think, see things that are bright green, that's giving us a tip off as to what might be inside of it. But cauliflower is a plain white vegetable. So when we look at it, we don't immediately know what it's giving us. However, it is a very, very healthy choice and a great thing to incorporate into our meals. It is a very high, uh, or it's a great source of vitamin C. It's a good source of vitamin K. It's got potassium, magnesium, all sorts of different vitamins and minerals to help fuel your body. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm cutting those florets to uh, maybe about an inch total in size. I'm trying to keep them pretty small. If you see any big pieces, like I kind of miss this guy, just go back and run your knife through them. I'm going to go ahead and actually drop these in this large mixing bowl here, just to make some more room on my cutting board since it's getting a little crowded. So everything that we make is gonna go in this mixing bowl because we're gonna combine some different seasonings to give everything flavor. Now we'll repeat the process for this other side. Again, I'm making a V-shaped cut to remove that hard part right there, and then we'll be able to cut into it. If you're worried about the V-cut, the other thing you can do is turn it on its side and just try to cut through it and then kind of manually pull parts of that out. I find that's a little harder to work with. Um, if you've got a sharp knife and you're careful, the V-cut works very well for getting through it. So again, you can see I'm able to pull off that perfect triangle shaped piece there. If you've got any guys that hang behind, you can just rip those off and add them. Okay. 
Again, running my knife through, trying to separate the stalk and those leafy bits from the rest of the cauliflower. It is edible, but like I mentioned, not the most fun thing to eat. So we're just gonna set that to the side for this recipe. All right. And then I didn't mention it with the vitamins and minerals earlier. The cauliflower is also a great source of fiber and water, like most vegetables. So it can actually help you meet your water needs for the day whenever you're eating fruits and vegetables, which is just a nice little bonus we can add in there. Okay, so that's chopped up nicely. So there's no exact measurement. We're doing just a medium head of cauliflower when you're at the grocery store. If you have a little extra or a little less cauliflower, it won't hurt the recipe. Um, we're not doing anything that complicated. So I'm gonna just scrape the excess little bits here into the bowl. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna be adding in is our chickpeas. So chickpeas or garbanzo beans are what we're using today. I bought a reduced sodium can. I recommend that you do the same. We are adding a little bit of salt in some places in the recipe. So trying to keep that sodium content lower by using canned ones that have less salt in them. I've rinsed and drained them, so they are ready to just be added in. And that's just your standard 15 ounce can that we're using today. So now for our flavorings here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine a little bit of oil, some salt, and some red curry powder. And I'm actually going to use this bowl here that I just had the chickpeas in to whisk this together separately and then add it into the cauliflower and chickpea mixture. So two tablespoons of olive oil going in there, a quarter teaspoon of table salt, and then one tablespoon of red curry powder. And using a whisk or a spoon, whatever you might have, we are just going to mix that together. And oh, I'm sorry, I forgot an ingredient. Uh, no, I didn't. Sorry, that's for the tahini sauce we're going to make later on. I'm mixing up my uh, different seasonings here. So yeah, just the oil, the curry powder, and the salt for this step, whisking that together. And then once it's mixed, go ahead and just drizzle that over your cauliflower chickpea mixture. You'll probably find that it's going to stick to the bowl a little bit. You can have a spatula nearby, keep that handy, and then that way we can get all that flavoring in. We want to get as much of it as we can because that's going to really give these vegetables that extra kick whenever we bite into them. The curry powder is going to give us that signature flavor and then of course salt always makes things taste a little better. So we got all that in there now and now I'm just going to combine this. I'm just going to stir it. We're trying to make sure that every chickpea, every piece of cauliflower has a little bit of flavoring on it so that every bite tastes great. So I'm mixing that around. And by this point, your oven should probably be preheated or it should be getting close. Again, we set that to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and prepare our baking sheet here. I'm going to move our cutting board out of the way for just a moment. So on your baking sheet, we're going to go ahead and just give it a quick spray with some cooking spray. And then we're going to dump our cauliflower and chickpea mixture onto the baking sheet. Try to spread that out into an even layer. If things are stacked on top of each other, they won't cook as evenly and that'll give us just some uneven textures which we don't want. So that's all spread out nicely. So go ahead and put this on the middle rack in your oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, I cheated today and pre-made it for the sake of our demonstration. So that's the one that's already baked there. And just to show you how that looks when it comes out, you can see all the cauliflower has a nice like crispy brown edge to it. Same with the chickpeas. That's going to taste really, really good. We're going to set that over to the side for just a moment. If you were making this recipe at home, of course, that wouldn't be ready just yet. So after you set the cauliflower and chickpea in the oven, you're going to roast them for about 20 minutes. Halfway through at the 10 minute mark, it's a good idea to give them a little stir, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and burning, and then put them back in for the remaining 10. So 20 minutes total. Your quinoa should also still be cooking. Mine's been going um, since the start of the demonstration, so it's probably getting pretty close. I'm gonna go over there and turn the heat off in just a moment. 
And now we're gonna come back to our main recipe here and we're gonna make our sauce or our dressing that we're gonna put on top of all this when we make the bowls at the end. This is where a lot of the heartiness comes from and a lot of the flavor. We're gonna be using tahini today, which I've talked about a little bit before. It's been in some of our other recipes. If you're unfamiliar with it, tahini is essentially peanut butter, but made from sesame seeds. It has a very nutty flavor. It's not as sweet as peanut butter is, um, but just ground up sesame seeds are made into a paste and that is how we get tahini. It's used in a lot of like thick, creamy dressings and sauces. It adds a lot of sort of body and volume to things. So it works great for something like this. I'm gonna kill the heat on the quinoa because I've gone ahead and cooked it for the full about 12 minutes that it takes. And if you haven't used quinoa before, uh, you can take a look at it similar to brown rice. If the water has been absorbed, you know that the quinoa is ready to go. It's like light and fluffy. It's soaked up that water and expanded. That's a good place to be. So let's get the dressing going here. So we're gonna use two tablespoons of tahini. Uh, if you've got tahini on reserve because you used it before, make sure to give it a stir. Or if it's a new container, go ahead and give it a stir. The oil can separate sometimes, just like how natural peanut butter works. And you can see on the camera there, it's pretty runny. Um, if you've had natural peanut butter before, you know it's very liquidy and tahini is similar to that. So we're doing two tablespoons of that. All right. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of minced garlic. If you prefer to use fresh garlic, you can. Just use a full clove. And we've got garlic in there. Just a dash of black pepper, anywhere from an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon. That's up to you. Okay. We are gonna do two tablespoons of water. The reason being that the tahini is very, very thick and we want to thin it out a little bit. So the water will help us with that. So two tablespoons. Okay, we're almost ready to mix that together. Just one more key ingredient. We're gonna use a fresh lime today. And if you don't wanna buy fresh limes, you can just get away with using a tablespoon of lime juice in the bottle. The reason I bought fresh today is this recipe does call for lime zest, which similar to lemon zest, if you've ever had a recipe that calls for zest before, essentially you're gonna rinse the lime off and then you're gonna use a zester or a grater or anything like that to get pieces of the outside in there, the rind, it'll really add a lot of flavor, um, just kind of give it a little bit more of a pop, which is fun. So I'm going to, what I'm gonna do, let me move the spoon out of the way here. I'm gonna use these really fine holes on the side here and just run the lime up and down it. And you should see some pieces coming off down there. If you have an actual, if you've ever seen the zesters before, they're usually like long, narrow stick kind of things. Those will work even better than this. I don't have one of those on hand, so I'm just using the cheese grater, which most of us probably have one of those in our household, and that'll work just fine. And you'll get a little bit from just doing this. I find the most effective thing is after you've built up, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's some grain here that I can see from my end. After you've built some of that up, you can actually reach your hand inside and just scrape along the inside wall and you'll see most of the lime zest will actually be stuck to it and it'll come out that way. And that'll get us how much we need. We don't need a whole lot. We're kind of just doing like a dash or a pinch of it, just a little bit to give it some extra flavor. Then to get our lime juice, I'm gonna cut into the lime and just squeeze as much juice as I can out of it. Like I mentioned, the recipe calls for a tablespoon, but you're not gonna hurt anything if you do a little bit of extra lime juice. It'll just make it taste a little more flavorful. Okay, now we're going to, I'm gonna turn and just use my whisk again that I used earlier. It's okay if we're mixing flavors because it's all gonna come together at the end. And we're just gonna incorporate this together. We're trying to get the water and the tahini to blend together nicely since one is very oil-based and the other is very liquidy. They're gonna have a tendency to try to separate and stay apart, um, but we're gonna mix them together and get our dressing. All right, and hopefully, let me get that out of the way. Hopefully you can see that there. It's a, kind of a beige colored dressing, but it's very, very flavorful. And the lime juice smells great. It really adds a nice flavor to it. So we'll set that over to the side here. 
We are just about done with our prepping steps, because again, it's not too complicated of a recipe. The last thing we're gonna do is we're going to use some baby spinach, and I'm just gonna grab a couple handfuls here at a time. And what we're gonna do is when your quinoa finishes cooking, the timing was a little off for me since I'm doing the demonstration, but at home, when the quinoa finishes cooking, what you'll wanna do is have some finely chopped baby spinach that you'll actually add into the quinoa and mix around while it's still hot. The spinach will wilt a little bit and break down some, which will mix it in with the quinoa, and we're just packing in some extra vegetables. So running my knife through, doesn't have to be precise here. We're just trying to chop it up so they're not giant leaves that people are biting into. And when it comes to measuring the greens, a fist, if you clench your fist, that's about the size of a cup, depending on your hand size. So I'm just doing maybe two fistfuls of spinach. Uh, we're just, like I said, adding in some extra nutrition, some extra fiber, just trying to really balance this meal. You can do more or less, depending on what you desire. I know I'm someone who, if I make like wraps or sandwiches, I always like to pack as many greens in there as I can. I will leave that entirely up to you. Okay, so I will bring the quinoa over here. And it looks like it's still hot enough, so I'm not too worried about the timing that happened here. I think we'll still be good. And I'm just going to add in those handfuls of spinach. And then I'm going to grab a spoon and just sort of stir that around so that the spinach can wilt. It'll have some of the hot quinoa on top of it. Okay, so that is all looking good. I'm gonna grab one more bowl and just plate it real quick. Although I guess you probably don't call it plated if you're putting it in a bowl. Um, so we will start with just a couple scoops of our quinoa spinach base here, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's just quinoa mixed in with some of the wilting spinach. I think it has a nice, very like earthy appeal to it to see the greens and the browns there. All right, so we've got some of that as our base. Now, um, be cautious for this part because obviously I pulled this out of the oven not too long ago, so the tray is still very hot. You might want to wait for that to cool. Um, but we're going to just dish some of that onto our bowl. And let me actually grab a better tool for this. So I'm just going to try to get some of the chickpeas and some of the cauliflower to go on there. So the chickpeas are our plant-based source of protein for this meal. And quinoa is an interesting grain because it actually adds... Uh, a good bit of protein as well, so we're getting a nice mixture there. Set that back over to the side. And then the last thing we'll do is, let me just use a spoon here. We're just going to get a little bit of that dressing and drape it over the top. A little does go a long way. There's not a whole lot of dressing here. This recipe makes about three to four servings, so think about that as you're dividing it up. Tahini is pretty cal uh, calorically dense. So mix in a little bit and then you can stir it up. Before I stir it though, I will show you what we're looking at there. So just those nice roasted vegetables on top with that dressing, the greens and the quinoa at the bottom, adding that extra nutrition. It's a very, very flavorful meal. It tastes best hot, though cold leftovers do work pretty well in this case. Um, if you do want to heat it back up, you can always just microwave it. What I recommend doing for storage is to store, if you can, the dressing separately. If you mix it in with everything else and put it in the fridge, the texture of things may kind of get a little bit of a downgrade, but if you keep that in a separate little container and add it before you're ready to eat it, that'll give you the best experience. Um, so that's really it for the roasted curry chickpea bowls. Pretty straightforward, a lot of nutrition coming from the whole grains of the quinoa, uh, the spinach that we worked into there, the chickpeas giving us our main source of protein with the cauliflower, and then some healthy fats from the tahini dressing that we did. So I did see we got a message or two in the chat. Let me just check these out here. Mm, okay, so this has to do with the texture. Is there anything you can do to prevent the spinach from going bad slash slimy? So 
Unfortunately, when we are mixing that spinach into the quinoa, our objective is to get it to wilt. So we are intentionally getting the texture to kind of droop a little bit. Having that in the fridge though, over time, you are gonna get, as the days go on, the texture is gonna become, uh, it usually won't get super slimy until you're approaching like day three or so, which is near the end of when you'd wanna keep it anyway. Um, but you are gonna see that texture change. I actually don't have a specific recommendation for how to avoid that in this particular recipe since we are mixing it in. Though, if people have suggestions in the chat, I'd love to hear it. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is if you wanted to reheat the quinoa and add in um, some fresh chopped spinach each time you make it, then you can just wilt the spinach as you need it for the meal rather than mixing it all in at the beginning. A little more work, but it can help you with that texture issue. Um, okay, and just a couple comments here saying it looks great and it looks delicious. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. I can confirm that it is in fact delicious. Obviously, I test these recipes before I share them. And this one has a really nice flavor. Uh, just with the curry powder and everything coming in, having some of that Indian cuisine. I really like the tahini flavor in the sauce with that lime juice, giving it that bright taste. So pretty simple to make, uh, kind of involved in terms of appearance because you see me with all these different dishes, but you're mostly just setting stuff in the oven on the stovetop and then chopping up a couple things. So not too bad. So we are gonna be sending out a copy of this recipe along with a link to a short survey and the recording. If you've got a couple minutes and can fill out the survey, we really appreciate it. It helps give us feedback on what we're doing well, what we can improve on, as well as just any ideas you might have for future demonstrations or other events. If you like today's demonstration and are interested in more of our events, we do cooking demonstrations twice a month, uh, as well as a variety of other things from virtual workouts to meditation to yoga and more. Uh, so, if you're not already on our mailing list, we can get you added. Email us at ed ws at gsu.edu. We'll try to drop that in the chat for you there so you can get on our mailing list and stay up to date on all of our events. I do want to give a big highlight to one of our upcoming events. Next Tuesday, October 18th on the Atlanta campus, we're going to be having our Fall Festival Walk and Talk. This is an event we only do once a year. We're really excited for it. We're going to be at Hurt Park. There's gonna be some snacks, some drinks, some music, and we're gonna go on a big employee walk and enjoy the nice weather we've been having. So we'd love to have you attend that. There's more information on, our, on the GSU calendar as well as on our EDWS website. We are also gonna be visiting the Decatur and the Clarkston campus for a similar fall festival. So if you're on those perimeter campuses, keep an eye out the Wednesday, or the Decatur one will be this coming Wednesday the 19th. And then the Clarkston one is gonna be in about two weeks. So keep an eye on the calendar. We'll be sending out more announcements about that. With that being said, thank you everyone for attending. I'm gonna check the chat one more time. Okay, a couple more questions have popped in. So let's see. Can you use couscous instead of the quinoa? Absolutely. You could use brown rice, you could use quinoa. Really all we're doing is making the base of our bowl a grain. So whatever you wanna do, a healthy whole grain option is preferred, which is why I mentioned like brown rice. You can definitely make those swaps. All right, and then I see a question about the curry. Oh, I'm not wild about uh, curry. Can you recommend a different spice to be the main flavor? Yeah, so basically when we're adding the curry powder, that's kind of where I guess more of the Indian cuisine flavors are coming from. Truthfully, the sauce, the tahini sauce is pretty neutral. Uh, since it has lime in it, I'm kind of imagining mixing it with kind of like a Mexican cuisine because I think that could work fairly well. So if you wanted to, instead of doing curry powder, maybe do some cumin and some chili powder, I think that could give the chickpeas and the cauliflower some nice spice and it would still work well with the dressing. So. Cumin and chili powder, I think, could be a good substitute for it. As for the exact amounts, you may have to play around with those to get uh, it exactly where you want it. Chili powder is going to be a little spicier. You can usually get away with using more cumin. So, yeah, you can kind of experiment there. Good question. And then, um, oh, we had two questions about the curry. Uh, and then another question about can you cook the spinach? So, yeah, if you want to, you can definitely cook the spinach. Um, that is something you could add in at the end if you want it to be fully cooked. This application just has it wilted, like I mentioned, so we're kind of gently cooking it, not fully. It'll still have some of its original texture there. But if you want to just separately cook it entirely and then mix it in, you definitely can. 
The idea is for this to be a hot bowl, so the extent to which you want to add vegetables, cook them, is entirely up to you. But I do think that having some cooked spinach mixed in with whatever your grain base is, quinoa, couscous, brown rice, I think that could be really nice. So that should work well. Okay, well, we are right at 1230. Um, oh, here's another question. So what temperature did you bake the vegetables and how much quinoa did you cook? So we are gonna be sending out a copy of that recipe. So it'll be detailing all those specific explanations, but we set the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and cooked the vegetables for 20 minutes. And then we stirred them at the 10 minute mark. And then how much quinoa? We used two thirds of a cup of quinoa dry. And then I cooked it according to package directions. Generally speaking, the package directions will have a water to quinoa ratio. I just want to encourage you to refer to your specific brand, just in case there are some differences, though it's generally the same. Um, the two thirds cup of dried quinoa will typically yield about two full cups of cooked quinoa. That's what the ratio um, normally would be. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what to work with there. But again, the recipe will detail that out and you're gonna be getting a copy of that sent to your email along with the recording. So thank you again, everyone, so much for attending today. Keep an eye out for the follow-up email, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.